<laughs> this is pink. Painted. Uh, so this is the one which will be flying in the first flight. I'd say it's more like a football, you know, it's, uh -huh. it's more round and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Suppression systems are like very tricky. Correct. And uh, they have to be like tested really well. They should have like good design. The complicated part of the fairing is, uh -huh. it has like two suppressions. It's horizontal oh. separation, vertical separation. The seal is surviving. Uh -huh. And then the flex seal, we flex it. We have a nozzle, that blue color nozzle, you know. If you had to name one small thing that became a big uh, engineering challenge, what plot would it be? realign things to get into that zone. So that's how this is quite useful. A super light composite structure, right. which you can just lift with your oh. hand. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just lift with your hand, but it takes the mm. loads of a rocket. The stage, stage two flex seal. You can see the metal here inside there. Welcome to Carib Scientist. Recently, I had the opportunity to do a factory tour of Skyroot Aerospace. For context, especially for people outside India, Skyroot Aerospace is an Indian private space startup. They are working on orbital class space rockets. It was founded by Pavan and Bharat in 2018. Both are ex ISRO, as in Indian Space Research Organization. The rocket they are actively working on, and which you will see in the video, is Vikram 1, which is a orbital class rocket with four stages. Three of its stages are solid, and the final stage is a liquid stage. Previously, they have also done a suborbital sub test with a rocket called VKS, Vikram S, parts of which also you will see in this video. Some parts of this interview get very technical, mostly it is fine. Also, just like all my videos, there are no mid-roll ads in this video, so you can watch this entire long video without any interruption. Enjoy. Damn, this is pink. Every yeah. time I open, uh, it's like huge. Like if I pan, I can pan around the side. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, Vikram S, but you said this is not fully... I think, yeah, slightly bigger than what uh, it actually is. Right. Very big. So how smaller will be the other that's outside? I can outside, show the outside yeah, one. yeah, outside one. So actual right. one is like 6 meters, you know. Okay. Tall. So this might be, I think, maybe 7 meters, 8 meters, yeah. So you had a plan of a scaled up Vikram S or... Uh, no, 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 because, uh, you know, so now our full focus is on orbital only, right. you know, so we'll keep it to orbital now, hmm. uh, yeah. Okay, so this is the rocket. Yeah. So we'll start f from behind? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so this is, this is a Vikram 1. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so this is like, you can see, I think, uh, you know, we can say it, it's actually 22 meters tall, so right. it will be like seven-storied building, tall vehicle. Yeah. And these are actual stage one, stage two, and stage three motors. Correct. And uh, this is the one actually is going to fly. Okay. So uh, the first one which will go for static test hmm. uh, is in our other facility. Okay. So that is all painted now and all. So right. this is yet to get painted. Uh, so this is the one which will be flying in the first flight. Uh, okay. And the stage two is like this is a third third motor. Huh. Uh, that will be flying in our second flight. You know, so okay. whatever you see there, hmm. uh, uh, the second. Uh, so, so you had used to post uh, images of Skyroot folks yeah, with one yeah. motor behind the uh, stage two. Yeah, that is that, that is, is this one. one. Yes, correct. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, but that is the uh, uh, second launch stage two. This is ah. a th this is a th uh, sorry. That is the first launch stage two. And this is the second launch stage two. Okay. So you you so we build like I think maybe uh, overall four four five hardware four hardwares. Okay, one for pressure, pressure test. Yeah, testing. yeah. So, so uh, one for uh, static test hmm. and uh, uh, three for uh, flights. Yeah. So, okay, we I think we'll come there. Yeah. So, this this is conical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will always be conical. No, we'll. Uh, in fact, the first flight will have it uh, cylindrical. Huh. Uh, because in between we redesigned to be conical to have. Uh, a good, uh, uh, what we call it as CPCG distance, mm -hmm -hmm. you know, so it's the distance between CP of the center of pressure and center right, of gravity right. of the rocket. Uh, so the less it is, mm. the better controllable the rocket is. Right. Uh, so we thought like, you know, to have like better control for the first flight, mm -hmm -hmm. Uh, we'll keep it conical. But we, once the ha all the hardwares are realized, once we have all the, you know, mm. uh, masses ready and right. everything, we realize that uh, CPCG distance is decent enough. And uh, the first stage also, like we increase the angle of the nozzle, we can, okay, okay. Um, the actuation angle of the nozzle also huh. we slightly increase. So, so all the controllability we fell in uh, good limits and good margins. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we thought like, you know, we'll go with cylindrical uh, base rod itself because that will give us better payload. Right. That yeah. cylinder, the metal ring is so it doesn't collide uh, with the shroud. 
you know no no that is for uh, uh, you know that is for attaching the actuators okay okay ha uh, okay yeah so so yeah so you have like uh, two actuators and uh, we have two additional sensors called lvdts ha ha you know so uh, in fact uh, for uh, solid motors are called mirror imaging sensors okay so the, the exactly opposite to each actuator there is one mm -hmm. mirror imaging sensor right you know so it will uh, exactly mirror the movement of this so okay. this is uh, specifically required for solid motors because uh, what happens is the solid uh, nozzles not only actuate in pitch and yaw mm -hmm. and all other directions right but they also move forward because as <laughs> because there's a flex seal in between correct, correct, correct. which compresses with uh, ah, combustion ah, pressure ah, ah, so ah. as as suddenly the pressure comes up no mm. the nozzle will get pushed outside okay 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 so uh, so for that you need a mirror image ah. sensor which will help you uh, control the vehicle very well yeah oh that was ah, that didn't think about it yeah. so i end point up yeah sure sure okay so submerged flex seal as in you uh, the flex seal i uh, think we'll see. i don't know if you have it here yeah yeah that is submerged no you can see the correct, nozzle correct. projecting inside the rocket right yeah yeah so so that's like the submerged nozzle submerged nozzle means like it's submerged inside the case you can okay. see the nozzle top portion is inside the motor right 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 yeah so that that's where that's what makes it submerged yeah and then that is the uh, flex nozzle which flex to correct, correct. Uh, so flex nozzle is used for uh, thrust vector control of the vehicle mm -hmm. so you know you can uh, you can change the uh, the direction of the nozzle you can change the direction of the rocket so uh, you will have both axis x and as in uh, yeah. pitch and so we call it pitch and yaw right uh, so if when you put two actuators in 90 degrees huh. you can actually rotate the nozzle in whatever direction you correct, want correct yeah okay yeah here i think i think we can only see one actuator yeah one actuator but uh, 90 degrees opposite there will be another actuator hmm. and then opposite to these actuators you have something called mirror imaging sensors you see right right yeah so they just like they are uh, they called lvdts there is a uh, sensor which will sense the displacement okay yeah so you said these are not fins right those are not fins those <coughs> those are called like uh, uh, so they, they we have like uh, sensors which identifies that the rocket lifted off okay uh, they called uh, last minute pull or last minute plug okay. lmps uh, so they are like electrical connectors uh -huh. uh, which after the rocket moves by certain mm maybe uh -huh. 5 mm or 10 mm it detaches and then you know that the actual lift off of the rocket happened and then right. you start the control of the control control of the vehicle okay okay yeah so everything seems like carbon fiber here is the is the yeah. whole rocket mostly composite yeah yeah so every all, all structures are composite so it's like uh, you know all carbon fiber uh, rocket one of the very few vehicles with all carbon fiber correct, correct. Uh, rocket in the world yeah so you have to uh, wrap this in a way that it has a directional strength yeah yeah so so we call it like filament winding so what ah. happens is that we have a four axis robot which Uh, you know puts the uh, fiber in the right direction right right uh, so it takes like hoop loads tensile loads uh, you know axial loads hoop mm -hmm. loads mm -hmm. and uh, also it has like this uh, uh, strength in all directions basically right uh, mostly this is like uh, we can take it as a pressure vessel you know inside you have like correct, correct. pressure at 80 atmospheres or mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, so it has to have that uh, so it should have a, a dome as well so we can see the dome also so the dome can take and you can also see the uh, fibers Correct. woven in different directions right right, right right so yeah and this has to be super precise also uh, yeah. so that you know you have a really good distribution of stresses Correct. and also this mass has to be lower as well so so that way i think uh, uh, the, this you need this four axis winding to uh, get this and also the you need a specific shape of the dome correct uh, you know which which calls it which we call it as isotensoid Dome, okay okay you know, so it has like very good distribution of stresses right. to reduce the mass of the dome because domes are super thick and super oh. heavy you know so we want to reduce as much as possible so that it's a lighter hardware and this must be have been challenging to engineer yeah yeah in fact i think uh, uh, it took us 2 uh, 3 years just to master building the these uh, carbon fiber structures right. uh, because uh, I, we, in fact we had we coded it from scratch 
we coded we actually uh-huh. give that m codes uh-huh. uh, you know into on, onto the uh-huh. uh, you know uh, onto the uh, machine uh-huh. uh, so so we build a software which gives directly the cnc codes right, and right. that cnc code will uh, oh. you know wind the rocket motor so we had to build everything from scratch software and then uh, but but we're happy that you know till now uh, every hardware we build is has worked okay so you yeah. wo- so you must have started on some small scale something yeah. what was the smallest so I, i i don't know whether you remember we fired something called kalam 5 correct correct long ago I I think three it took yes, three yes. years three years back yes. or four years back yes, yes. so it's a very small motor correct correct so it's like 1 is to 4 scale of our uh, stage 3 right okay so that we built it and then uh, ah. we project tested it we fired it correct, correct. you know so 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 that we got some good confidence and then we had to do a lot of trial windings to uh-huh. get some confidence on it and uh, and you know building it straight from the equations is very challenging you know this has a lot of uh, fundamental equations right, right. which define how the stress distribution happens how we have to wind the fiber right. what direction it has to go right. and then there's also something like there are factors like friction factor which you know if, if you don't maintain that ah. it starts slipping as you as you wind it starts ah, slipping ah, 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 ah. and when it slips you go on hard the whole hardware is gone you have to so you have to, so you have to build again everything. yeah you have to build everything oh. and uh, so it's quite challenging but i think we are good that we have mastered Hmm. in a reasonable way till now so that we can make uh, lightweight structures because margins on these are not very much right. you know if if you uh, if you go for very high margins hmm. your uh, mass goes very uh, you know very high mm-hmm. and if you go very light then you know the chances of exploding correct right so it has to be like very uh, delicate thin margins mm-hmm. uh, which we have to maintain and uh, that's where like the challenge comes into uh, attain those margins and manufacture it reliably again and again multiple hardwares multiple times right yeah so we i mean we you have said you have shown engines uh, methylox engines you know, yeah. running yeah so you had to build this with liquid stages in mind so they don't leak or uh, for solids you mean for no for your methylox stage yeah, future yeah. methylox stage yeah yeah so for uh, methylox stage also uh, so we we need to have a liner you know right. so there are two types of tanks liner liner tanks and oh. uh, linerless tanks uh-huh. as well so now the trend is even for cryogenics you don't need a liner if you actually build a composite hardware Correct. which the right resin mm-hmm. you don't need a liner mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we can do it with multiple methods one is through filament winding we can also do it with uh, uh, you know hand layups you can also do it with uh, uh, you know robots which add layer by layer it's called automated uh, fiber placement machines mm-hmm. different methods are there okay. uh, today you can build cryogenic tanks without liners at all yeah. okay so i see a design change here <laughs> yeah uh, there is a <laughs> cone uh, the earlier end is was straight yeah yeah so what what has happened to the first stage yeah so first stage we slightly increase the diameter hmm. you know to load in more propellant uh, okay. and uh, so that's where like you can get slightly better payload ha huh. uh, so that's where like uh, first stage is slightly bigger you know okay. around uh, i think around 200 mm diameter you know more diameter than the rest of the vehicle that's why you have a cone to transition from that uh, cylindrical to the uh you know this cylinder to the that cylinder you know. right so uh, slightly higher diameter cylinder to a lower diameter cylinder so almost 1200 kN yeah lots of, thrust. of lots, lots of, thrust. of thrust yeah yeah, yeah. Lots of it's a massive thrust. it's a massive uh, <laughs> stage i think you know once it static test happens right it's going to shake up yeah. right right uh okay this uh what is i forgot the name what you call this interstages interstages yeah so yeah. what will reside what ele- so every stage will have its own electronics uh, for yeah yeah what? correct correct every stage will have its own electronics and uh, but the mission computer will be one for the entire vehicle right right you know so uh, uh, that will stay in the topmost stage hmm. but for example uh, you need like batteries large batteries and uh, you need a control electronics to control the actuators and the nozzle right, for right. the tvc system that goes along with each uh, each stage mm-hmm. and also there's a like a long plumbing you know the, for example correct, there's a 10 meter long hardware so we have a very long uh, wire going from top to bottom so that also gets separated mm-hmm. you know whatever mass we can uh, let go we let go with each stage so we have to build separation system for the wires or is it like passively they'll get pulled up pulled up Uh, no our separation system is little bit different so we use instead of using pyros we use uh, pneumatic uh, system where like there are gas bottles again uh-huh. and then they store high pressure gas and then mm-hmm. you know that uh, gives a signal to uh, a mechanism which opens it up right, etc right. so that needs lot of plumbing etc all that's separate along with the stage 
this nozzle i i i is this the final size of the nozzle yeah this is the actual size of the nozzle yeah it looks so close to that interstage yeah yeah that's it i mean see the all rockets have very thin margins <laughs> so if you so if you want to have like uh, lesser size than this mm-hmm. you lose error ratio you know so that means when you lose error ratio you lose the isp mm-hmm. and uh, so uh, so when you lose isp you don't get much payload so right. you have to have as big nozzle as possible mm-hmm. and then uh, so what you have to do is we have to design the separation system such a way that you know uh, it, it it doesn't collide during separation right right yeah. right so stage 2 uh, this is kalam this is uh, kalam uh, what is that uh, uh, 250 kalam no, 250. because uh, the thrust is around 25 tons or 250 kN right. so you name your motors after thrust values correct right? correct yes yeah okay. yeah yeah So when will we expect expect a static fire of soon? I mean, just few weeks away probably. You know. Okay. So this has been casted, I think, months ago. Huh. We're just like waiting for uh, uh, the stage test uh, to happen soon. Yeah, this is nothing but like a stretched version of our stage three, which happened like you know two years ago. Right, right. So it's like the same diameter, just like stretched in length. Mm-hmm. Of course, with a bigger nozzle, and uh, you know, so all all everything is ready for a static test. We have to just assemble and test soon. Yeah, a few weeks more probably. What yeah. what are the challenges of scaling it like this? Like going from Kalam 100, right? Yeah. Kalam yes. 100 to yeah. a larger. What changes like engineering challenges with going going big? Those? One thing is that um, uh, you know the winding program also changes because the length hmm. is different, right? Right. Actually, you know, etc. And then, um, in fact, lengthier ones are easier to wind. Okay. You know, it's it's better and easier. And uh, so the th- third stage is more like a football, you know. It's mm-hmm. it's more round and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's slightly more difficult to wind. And uh, so it's it's actually easier, and you have to build a new tool, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, that length is different, this length is different, and this is heavier. Right. So so the tool will be different. And stage one tool is like massive, you know. It's it's a twelve meter tool. Correct. Correct. You know, it's it's like a twelve meter high precision tool, uh, which only few people can manufacture itself. So that way, the, the once the size becomes bigger, mm. the tooling becomes more complicated. and uh, handling becomes more complicated you okay. know like handling all these structures mm-hmm. you know moving them out you know putting them aligning them right, uh, right. so that becomes a challenge otherwise like tech is more or less the same okay yeah okay uh, the second stage third stage uh, interstage looks big yeah this yeah. this scales with the diameter uh, nozzle correct correct, so. correct 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 yeah 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 So, so here, uh, in fact, you cannot. Uh, we would love to go for a much bigger nozzle, actually, because uh-huh. you get even more error ratio. Right. Uh, so, but there are like lot of systems inside this mm-hmm. in the stage, uh, which which does the roll control of the entire vehicle. Oh, so, you the know? roll control will be in, in this, this interstage. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. So that uh, uh, you know, uh, so if you put roll control, originally our plan like several years ago was to have single roll control at the top of the vehicle. Correct, correct. And the like final kick stage of the vehicle. Right. But then, uh, uh, but then like that has a good uh, loss of payload. Right, right. So you know because we need to add like bigger tanks there. Mm-hmm. You need to add. Uh, You know, a lot of more propellant than required. You need to add bigger thrusters right, right. to for roll control of the entire vehicle, top to bottom. Because Correct. for roll control of the first few stages, you require more thrust, uh-huh. and after it, the vehicle gets lighter, you need less thrust to roll control. So what you do is that uh, if you put it at the top, you put bigger engines continuously, mm-hmm. and those will be carried up to the satellite Correct. and Correct. It causes like you know payload loss. Right. That's where we moved it down. and uh, so there we have tanks and other systems so we need to maintain some gap between the nozzle and this so that's where that limits the error ratio of the third stage okay yeah w- what is the loss like okay fine the fourth stage one is to one yeah S- Uh, the third stage or second stage how much do you add and how much do it you depends do? on each stage uh, you know like for example third stage will be like 1 is to 2 around or even less 1 okay. is okay. to 1.8 or something okay. like that and uh, first stage is like the least uh, Uh, you know sensitive uh, hmm. it's you know one is to you know 30 plus oh, number wow. okay. yeah so you, even if you add 30 kg huh. you lose only a, a kilogram of payload uh-huh. yeah that is a, that is nice yeah uh, okay so this is kalam 100 100 yes yes this is what this was test fired i think more than couple of years ago correct correct yeah does anything anything has changed or no we have upgraded it have made it uh, much lighter and uh, if, you, if you remember like i think that was a fixed nozzle concept mm-hmm. and uh, for fixed nozzle you need a separate pitch shock control mm-hmm. right now we made this also into a tbc thrust vector control so this is also nozzle rotates it has its own actuators nozzle rotates right. and it steers the vehicle and uh, so you avoid like big pitch shock thrusters mm-hmm. which will uh, be required for a fixed nozzle 
and we realized that that gives a good payload gain right. so we put a tvc system here as well so all three stages have tvc all all three stages have tvc which is require big batteries to go in along not very big i mean depends on the actuator okay. the first stage requires like a decently big batteries uh-huh. and then second much smaller third is much hmm. much smaller yeah right so you were talking about uh, some will require retro motors some might not require retro yeah motors. yeah 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 so uh, so basically what happens in solid motors is that there is a residual thrust after mm-hmm. the uh you know action time is over still there is some sort of thrust which is uh, uh, you know residual after the motor is off as well correct correct uh, tail off thrust yeah so uh-huh. and the tail offs are can often be very long as well it right. can be very long tail offs as well so what we do is that we have some uh, smaller solid motors uh-huh. which fire for few seconds uh-huh. few seconds typically you know 1 to 2 seconds correct. around that and then um, they fire and they negate this extra tail off thrust which uh-huh. is uh, built up and immediately separate the stage so that way what happens is that uh, the second stage can ignite immediately correct and uh, you avoid losses you know so there are uh, multiple losses which uh, and there is a no control zone mm-hmm. uh, the quicker you uh, start the control of the second stage ah. you reduce this no control zone okay okay uh, because what happens the first and second stage the atmosphere is very thin but still mm. there is still this, okay. decent uh, you know what we call dynamic pressure right so there is still some decent dynamic pressure mm. um, so and if you just leave it for long time no the rocket completely will tumble so you have to immediately start control the moment the second stage uh-huh. sub, uh, first and second stage uh-huh. separate uh-huh. the second stage should ignite <laughs> as quickly okay. as possible to reduce that no control zone okay uh, so that's where first to second we use uh, retros uh-huh. and other stages we use like uh, springs and uh, other pneumatic pushers or things which can uh, assist in separation so uh, so the first uh, wire tunnel ends here yeah yeah no so so there is a wire tunnel continuously going you know hmm. so what happens wherever there is interstage the wires go inside hmm. the routing is inside oh, oh, oh and then it comes out again you see some cutouts one below the other it again hmm. comes out then on the motors anyway you cannot uh, put inside the motors because it's all propellant right. so again it uh, happens on the rocket you know on the surface of the rocket you have some wire tunnels then again it goes into the structure and again it comes out yeah just curious have you aero modeled with wire tunnel without wire tunnel does yeah, it make yeah, a big difference absolutely you know no, it's because see for a smooth vehicle hmm. with no projections huh. aerodynamics is quite simple and these small small projections <laughs> create lot of issues right right and uh, and in fact they have to be so well modeled hmm. and uh, because all the coefficients especially even there's something called uh, uh, roll coefficient mm-hmm. roll coefficient decides how much roll thrusters you have to uh, you know you have to okay. size for So, so what happens is that if you don't uh, like model them properly, you start getting like non-actual, uh, non-realistic numbers, oh, okay. uh, and then you size things uh, non-realistically, and that can like uh, compromise the mission. So right. you have to be very super accurate on the aerodynamics. That's why we do wind tunnel testing to validate as well, which mm-hmm. we completed for Vikram one. Uh, so we see that all the coefficients we require are as close to accurate as uh, possible, and then mm. based on that, we see that all the sizing is done with some margins. Uh, so that even if uh, accounts for some delays right. uh, or like some changes like for example during the design process we keep changing slight dimensions correct, and all correct. so we keep some margins to absorb them yeah right so this wires how they separate they get just pulled out or they they have a cutter mechanism yeah so there are some special kind of connectors uh-huh. which which have a separating mechanism okay right? very small mechanism okay, uh, along okay. with the rod and so they have certain so beyond certain force they separate Oh, okay. so as the uh, as the stages are pushed either uh-huh. with a retro motor or with a springs right mm-hmm. so these connect all separates oh, yeah so so they couldn't like pull the stage little here and there it's very smooth they can because uh, but we designed for that okay okay you know and also if there are too many wires what mm-hmm. we do is that we put them opposite to each other so that uh, uh-huh. when forces there forces are okay, opposite okay, okay, so okay. that they don't create a torque you know right. so all that uh, uh, all considered in the design mm. Uh, so that you know we can uh, uh, get a very stress free suppression because most of the failures you see is in suppression right, right. yeah so propulsion more or less works well uh-huh. and a lot of systems work well but uh-huh. suppression systems are like very tricky correct and uh, they have to be like tested really well they should have like good design margins right right yeah so something has changed here in the fourth stage yeah i think you can see a central engine right so right. so the raman 2 whatever you see is the central engine Hmm. Um, so previously, uh, I think I think you were quoting the old like four hmm. thrusters around yeah, the vehicle. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that is a long back change. We changed the design to central thruster. Correct. Where like uh, uh, there's only one engine hmm. in the center, 
and uh, then that propels the final stage and that's a 3d printed engine where yeah. like even the pipes are 3d right. printed along with mm -hmm. the engine etc and uh, so this uh, th this has all the channels inside itself right. and which cools it's a regeneratively cooled uh, engine mm. and uh, and then but this is a fixed engine so it doesn't have a tvc Huh. Uh, because a TVC will call for new ah. actuators, correct, control correct. electronics, batteries, etc. Hmm. So be because it's a small engine, we can actually manage with small thrusters, few right. newtons of uh, thrusters right, to manage right. the pitch and yaw. But still, you have projections, four projections on the vehicle if you see. Correct. So those are like small newton thrusters hmm. for pitch and yaw control. They, we call them Raman Mini uh, thrusters. Right. They control, the, they do the pitch and yaw control of this uh, engine. So putting them outside on the surface yeah. versus putting them on the base plate, yeah. there is a difference. Yeah, yeah. So see when you put it outside, no, hmm. so you get more torque. Right. Yeah, so you should keep it as away as possible. Hmm. And when you do pitch and yaw, right? From the center, what is the torque is what? I mean force into distance. Right, right. So the, the moment you move as much distance as possible, with a small thruster you can actually uh, manage a good torque, right. good control. Right, right. So that's where we need to keep it as away as possible. Okay. Uh, you know, and uh, so that, that's why, like you know, we put it uh, as away from the thruster as possible. Okay. So coming to the satellite now, what with this latest configuration, what is the max uh, max payloads? So it depends you? depends on the orbit. You know, we could um, so target is to reach like 400 plus, hmm. uh, and uh, so we'll keep having like updates and upgrades, small small hmm. upgrades with each flight. You know, so awesome. because uh, from generally the first two flights we get a lot of data mm. and we see like how much propellant is left, how much guidance margin is actually required, right. what are the different uh, fluctuations we see in the flight, etc, etc. So all that we get to know, I think we will get a fair amount of idea on the exact payload after the first flight. Okay. You know, we get a lot of data and uh, the whole target is to, uh, for low inclination orbits, etc, we have to cross like 400 kgs. Okay. So, yeah. f fairing, simple to design or? Because oh, this is I mean, not this cylinder. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, fairing is, again here also the tooling is complicated. You know, right. So you should build the tool, big steel tool. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I think maybe in some of the pictures might be there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there is a quite a big uh, steel shining right, right. tooling which we need to make. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is, uh, that is, I think that takes good amount of time. After that, I think it's it's fine. I mean, it's, it's all lay up and uh, then you build the uh, carbon composite shell and then it's anyway light enough. And then, uh, but but uh, the complicated part of the fairing is mm. it has like two separations, it's horizontal oh. separation, vertical separation. Because Correct. fairing has to open like a clamshell, right? Uh -huh. So there will be vertical separation Correct. plane, horizontal separation plane. So you should have separation in both act, mm -hmm. in both planes. Right. And it should work really well and re uh, very reliably. While so. it's thrusting. Yeah. So uh, yeah, while it's thrusting, it has to separate. But uh, thrusting part may not be a challenge, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, but in general, just separation of two parallel planes, right. uh, not parallel planes. I mean perpendicular planes, but uh, parallelly separating them parallelly. There is also like we need to give a small gap between them. Mm -hmm. so there is there is some science physics associated with it to have a very successful uh, clamshell opening of the right. uh, uh, payload fairing. So will you also have a seal and air vent, external air vent, and all those? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we need to have a seal because there are like two structures, right, uh, together and then uh, in, in uh, launch vehicles, structural dynamics is complicated because mm. so we build a lot of thin shells to save weight right, right. and uh, then they have dynamics, their own dynamics. Correct, correct. So, so what happens is that uh, they will open, there's, there's statics also, dynamics also. Mm. So there's like force which opens it huh. up and there is also like dynamics mm -hmm. which opens it, things up. Even if locally, if something opens up, what happens? The clean air which is to be maintained for the satellite, mm -hmm. that escapes out. Correct. You know, and uh, we, we have vents for venting slowly, but we don't want uh, the air dust or, you know, air to get inside. Correct. Right. So that will pollute the atmosphere inside. Huh. So we want things moving from inside to outside because uh -huh. uh, naturally there is vacuum outside. Mm -hmm. We have to vent out to reduce the stresses. Correct, correct. So we have a vent, uh, we will have vent adapters to vent things out. Uh -huh. But we ha we should have all protection so that the dust from the external atmosphere does not get in. So right. we need so to have like good seals. As it is going up, it has to slowly release the clean air from inside. Yeah, 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 yes. Oh. Yeah. So otherwise what happens is there will be like, it is like a one, uh, one atmosphere of pressure, correct, correct. which is big enough if you calculate over the surface area, <laughs> this is decently big enough. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but but still, I mean, it's better to vent it uh, right. when you have like to reduce the stress, but it can also survive, hmm. yeah, hmm. the pressure. So, even if in cases like vent valve fails, also at least our, our payload fairing will survive. Yeah. 
do you have to put any material on the tip? Uh, what is your max heating going to be as you go? Uh, uh, no, temperature we should not cross like more than 100 degrees centigrade of the skin. Mm -hmm. uh, so based on that, like we uh, put a thermal protection system on top. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have uh, certain materials which will uh, which will take this temperature and thickness will change mm -hmm. depending on the uh, heat flux. So right. the tip, of course, the heat flux is high, so you'll yeah. have more thickness. Yeah. And as you go down, the requirement is reduced. So you reduce the thickness of the right. thermal protection system. Yeah. So we'll we'll see, right? Uh, fairing separation test of. Some yeah, sort. sure. We'll. I, th I think the hardware is in final stage. Mm -hmm. Um, and now we are like busy completing the stage separation test. Right. So, yeah, once that is done, I think uh, you should see them soon. Yeah, PLF separation as well. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. rocket. Yeah. Very big as well. <laughs> and people just, uh, how much you said? 17 meter? 22. 22, 22 meter. Yeah, yeah. So, it's like, yeah, it's, it's I mean, equivalent to seven storied building tall yeah. vehicle. Eight. Yeah, and it actually it's become slightly longer than when we designed four years ago. Yeah, 18 meter, I think. No, no, no it was like around uh, 1920. 1920. So, slowly, slowly, you know, you need some gaps and then, you know, yeah. right. uh, and then like the first stage also slightly increased and all that. When, when the actual detailing happens, mm -hmm. it has gone uh, longer. Yeah. Yeah. This was good. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. And this is like... Uh, Ah, this I think this is this. I think you uh, we recently done this. So these are like two test rigs, basically. Hmm. Uh, so first is that test rig where we test all the flex seals. Hmm. You know, so flex seal is uh, is used for like uh, you know we want to rotate the nozzle hmm. and uh, you know to have a flexible member hmm. and you cannot have a regular bearing because right. it should also survive the loads and the temperatures correct, correct. Uh, and heat flux which is there inside Pressure, the motor. Right. So we have a specific type of uh, seal called flex seal which has layers of rubber and uh, metal mm. and to protect the rubber we have another layer of uh, high temperature rubber okay. and all that. So so that can flex up to you know whatever the angles we want maybe mm -hmm, up to mm -hmm. 7, 8 degrees it can flex maximum mm. in the maximum scenario. And then um, so what we do is that this one we pressurize up to the actual uh, pressure which is required in the motor mm -hmm. with some margin, additional margin we give right. and then we pressurize it up and see that the flex seal is surviving mm -hmm. and then the flex seal we flex it. We have a nozzle, that blue color nozzle, you know, right. uh, mm -hmm. which we see here. Yeah, so there is like a, a simulated nozzle which we have which we'll use for every uh, this nozzle. So this right. is not the actual nozzle but this is a simulated nozzle. Mm -hmm. We simulate the moment of inertia etc. And then we have these actuators which move it and this is for flex seal. We, 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 we put the flex seal with different pressures and then mm -hmm. do it. And then this is the actual nozzle. So, so that we do with dummy nozzle right. with uh, different actuators. Mm -hmm. And here we, we do with uh, actual nozzle with actual uh, actuators. And then this gets assembled to the actual motor and then we f fire it or go for flight. Right. Yeah. So you will be going full closed loop s since launch or? No, so uh, initial phase will be uh, open loop to reduce the loads. Huh. You know, slowly there will be a switch from open loop guidance to closed loop guidance. Okay. You know, so that will, uh, so it's more to manage the loads, even though it's not optimum on the payload perspective, but hmm. uh, we uh, do it to manage the loads. Okay. Yeah. So uh, similar to PSLV and all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we do that wind biasing, hmm. uh, which which will uh, see that the errors are lower than right. what we expect. Uh, but yeah, and also like uh, it helps us uh, manage the stress on the vehicle as we go further. So last minute based on winds and all you will have to feed uh, different yeah, models. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. So in fact we did that for Vikram S as well. Uh -huh. So Vikram S is like a highly aerodynamic uh, driven vehicle. Correct. You know, so we need to, we need to check winds on that particular mm -hmm. day and then uh, so they have a wind profiler which right, checks right. the exact way how, how the winds are and then based on that we uh, you know, we feed that angle of the launch mm -hmm. based on that, right? right? So, so similarly here it will be a slightly different, but uh, the concept will be somewhat similar, similar as well. Right. So where we detect, we do wind biasing, we get all the wind data. Mm -hmm. Based on that, we record that uh, program uh, to the vehicle, which which will go. Uh, the gui guidance will uh, take it in open loop initially, based ah. on the winds, and then it goes to closed loop. How how close this happens to the launch? Uh, or you plan to do? So it's not not very close to the launch. We want uh, ideally it should clo go as close to the launch as possible. Mm -hmm. So we do few hours depending on the wind biasing uh, uh, limitations. 
and a few hours before we try to complete it and then feed it i have heard yeah. of cassettes uh, and something something is being put uh, so now it's all digital right so right, right, right. <laughs> yeah so yeah okay one last thing on this nozzle this shape is optimized for what uh, domain in speed so aerodynamics and uh, acoustics both you okay. know okay so it should be like smooth for aerodynamics the flow should be quite smooth and uh, uh, and basically the satellite uh, right hmm. the satellite environment is nothing but the acoustic environment right so as the rocket goes up uh, basically the acoustics comes from one is from the plume mm -hmm. uh, during lift off yeah. right the huge uh, sound correct, which comes correct. so that affects the satellite another hmm. thing is during the transonic regime when mm -hmm. uh, the rocket like crosses the mac 1 mm -hmm. right and there will be like a good amount of acoustics which uh, comes in Uh, so so uh, this shape which is called an ogive shape which mm. is it's quite good for uh, less acoustics and also decently you know good for the aerodynamic flow as well right yeah, and the flow also decides the acoustics so it's all like quite related and ogive is like a very good optimum uh, shape for uh, payload fairings but we also see that conical and mm. cylindrical as well but the conical and cylindrical what happens is like manufacturing is easy mm. but uh, it's not as good as the ogive uh, shape okay And since you spoke about Max Q, is your like grain geometry and star optimized such that yeah, there the thrust is lower. Absolutely, absolutely. You need that because uh, see the uh, so one beauty about uh, solid fuel vehicles is that uh, you can design the thrust time curve okay. as as it is. You can uh -huh. uh, design without requiring a you no know, throttling valve or mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, or any algorithm or nothing. You know, right, right. you just design the shape of the. Uh, grain mm. and you can design whatever shape you want and uh, you can see that you know it throttles sometimes even 30 40% uh -huh. during the flight again it comes up as oh. per required so what okay. we do is that initially uh, before reaching max q mm. uh, we see that the thrust goes down mm -hmm. so that our q comes down q is right. maximum dynamic pressure mm. uh, so uh, max q is maximum dynamic pressure and uh, so q comes down and so overall max q also during the flight comes down right so what happens we have like a thrust which goes up initially hmm. and then comes down just before the max q design after right. that zone is passed again it goes up so you we design the curve such that uh, mm -hmm. you have uh, uh, very less uh, overall yeah. stress on the vehicle yeah S small details yeah yeah no i mean uh, like uh, so building ro uh, rockets is like so many so many engineering judgments to be made yeah yeah very thin margins mm -hmm. and uh, across various systems right. hundreds of systems working together <laughs> everything related to each other Correct. it's quite a challenge and uh, that's why it keeps evolving the design keeps evolving with time and uh, i think several iterations even i think for each grain we do several hundreds of iterations oh. which grain is ideal uh -huh. you know uh -huh. even like 2 3 uh, uh, kilopascals of uh, dynamic pressure reduction mm -hmm. you know and then that affects the burn time and you know there's so many everything is related to everything mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. so it's like uh, you know building an optimum vehicle is a good challenge very but very exciting to do all the iterations and right. and face something and sometimes actual hardware comes different than what we designed correct so and then we have to again keep on iterating even on the hardware side also so one on design simulation side mm -hmm. we have to iterate a hardware side we have to iterate <laughs> you know so it should say continuous uh, evolving process if you had to name one small thing that became a big uh, engineering challenge what plot would it be like anything uh, small which like which general public won't appreciate as such is it on vikram one anything anything at space or in this in the sky route yeah, i think vks was a tough flight no oh. <laughs> i think even i never imagined that uh, it was uh, it would be so difficult hmm. but uh, i think the simulation was very challenging because it's a highly aerodynamic driven vehicle right and uh, it also has a lot of dynamics uh, dynamic characteristic mm -hmm. you know pitch your roll uh, you know linking up Correct. and all that stuff and uh, you know we have to rely on uh, uh, previously what you do is that you if you have like a lot of flights you do few for few flights and then you learn Correct. you don't have that uh, you know flexibility you have to right. have the first flight right, right, right. Uh, and also very thin very small amount of time we thought like you know we would complete well took a lot of time and uh, mm -hmm. so many simulations i can't believe how many simulations we have done hmm. on thermal aspects because it's a very fast moving vehicle yeah, yeah, yeah. the heat generated is also very high right and uh, uh, and then like the aerodynamics even slight change in the fin can affect the dynamics of the vehicle right and right. it can you know it can go from a successful flight to you know completely a disaster in just like few mm -hmm. few small changes in uh -huh. the 
design not done properly or not simulated properly and we cannot simulate everything on ground right you know so it's that has been quite challenging even on the small vehicle on vikram 1 um, uh, i think uh, even uh, i think separation dynamics is one uh, challenge you know mm-hmm. because lot of multi physics mm-hmm. comes into picture mm-hmm. and then uh, even separation mechanism also something new which we have built and uh, there is also new it required new materials Correct. than what we expected mm-hmm. so you know uh, and then um, uh, it also requires like it is consistent mm-hmm. like you do hundreds of tests it works right mm-hmm. so making it to that kind of reliability is also quite challenging i think separation part is a bit of a challenge right you know, quite here and um, and also like um, uh, the winding as i said initially mm-hmm. you know building up that expertise to right. do big motor winding right. uh, because here um, you know what we call these as uh, 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 these are like openings are different mm-hmm. the motor openings are different uh, when openings are same it is a different kind of it's it's easier to wind when openings are uh, there's an opening ratio mm-hmm. very difficult to wind and uh, our opening mm-hmm. ratios are like quite large So right. making the winding very very difficult so we have to make the right program for it mm-hmm. and do some trails we have to do some winding trails see that yeah. it's not slipping you know and all that hardware is expensive not to develop uh, hardware is very expensive and uh, we cannot iterate because it's too expensive to iterate multiple times you have to get it uh, first time right so we built small prototypes then mm-hmm. we went to the stage 3 then stage 3 became a success then like we went to stage 2 then stage 1 right right so so like that uh, i think we have built like uh, quite a good expertise Uh, with time there are a lot of small minor things hmm. which we have many of them which we have learned step by step right right and uh, yeah so that is one challenge and um, even the flex uh, uh, flex nozzle system mm-hmm. has been like much more challenging than what we imagined you know because uh, actuators Uh, mm. building the actuators to the required reliability uh-huh. you know so what happens is that when you test the actuators you see some small spikes and uh-huh. uh, uh, some inconsistencies from what we uh, what we designed for right right so, so then like that also becomes a challenge here. you know fixing them understanding the root cause uh-huh. fixing uh, 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 fixing all the bugs which has originated then there is some because of software some because of hardware right. and then you have like a massive control electronic system uh-huh. which manages all the power from the battery and correct, then correct. goes up so so i think the so building the actuation system is i think uh, very very challenging i mm-hmm. i never imagined that that will end up a big challenge but Correct. it happened to be a very big challenge and that's also like a learning process it, it took time to get that learning curve mm-hmm. to uh, get to a uh, enough level where you know we can build any new actuation system which is very robust and it works right, and right. then uh, and it has a lot of elements like, like i said like software hardware mm-hmm. and then even uh, even small tolerances change would uh, you know cause issues in the actuation system it has to be per- it just has to be perfect it cannot be Correct. have any small lacunas and you see like mm-hmm. uh, the data not being uh, uh, very good if mm-hmm. even small sp- even with small small issues it can create that yeah okay. okay i think before wrapping up on this one one last yeah. question yeah uh you might have cameras on inter stages and uh, correct, fairing correct. separate yeah yeah what is the challenge with having uh, high bandwidth or high say hd streaming yeah what yeah. would limit you there what is the constraint there so it is the hardware so like uh, uh, you know because uh, you have an ethernet cable inside mm-hmm. you know, ethernet line inside and uh, you have uh, uh, and also like you have so internally also there is some bandwidth limitation huh. whatever maximum the ethernet cable which actually takes quite a good mbps but uh, from a uh, vehicle till the ground hmm. right so there is this antennas which hmm. beam down the electromagnetic right. radiation you know and then which uh, uh, gives to the radars mm-hmm. etc so that also has a limitation so we we can actually make it very big but you will have to um, uh, you know make slightly more Uh, you lose some payload that's it it's, it's just a balance mm. of it and especially for small vehicles payload is very very tough to get right right you know because every small for example if you build a vehicle with let's say 4 tons of capacity uh-huh, uh-huh. they are like you know maybe uh, uh, you know getting payload uh, uh, compromises is slightly changes here and there even design with slightly bigger Correct. vehicle but in small vehicles what happens is that getting the payload is super challenge Right. and everywhere you are tried to optimize uh-huh. even here also like you know we would love to have like wonderful cameras beaming like very in uh-huh. high very high uh-huh. bandwidth continuously throughout uh-huh. the flight uh-huh. right but that becomes a luxury 
right where you have to let go some payload some hardware becomes like a little bit more uh, bigger you need to have uh, high bandwidth communications internally and externally as well so so your ttc and your camera feed will be two separate uh, uh, or will be there on the same channel they'll be same channel same, same channel, channel but the channel will get uh, heavy you know the entire right, the, right. yeah yeah so we, it has to be designed for this high bit rates correct, correct. and uh, it also has to be uh, like for example you can go with ultra hd for example mm -hmm. ultra hd if you camera if you go you need to like have like a high gbps mm -hmm. kind of a, a system yeah, where you right. know it beams out uh, so that requires like heavier hardware mm -hmm. yeah, right so yeah so that way but we have like a decent i think vks if you have seen right mm -hmm. it's a yeah. it's a hd it camera good, yeah. slightly good. i think slightly smaller than hd or something it was decent mm -hmm. yeah 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 that was a good vks so also. yeah so i think with slowly with as we go further we can get this thing also better yeah as you optimize the payload better we can Correct. also have like better uh, uh, hardware which can uh, be more really high definition yeah much much high definition video yeah yeah yeah, so this is like a, a center of gravity measurement oh. machine. Oh. Right. So we put all the sections on this ah. and see that uh, because we design for a center of gravity, mm -hmm. and but what we see is from the 3D model, which will remain different from what is actual. Mm -hmm. So we put the actual section on this with so many components inside, oh, oh. and then we measure the CG. Anything off than what we design, again, you know, your uh, control power plant is not designed for those offsets. Correct. So you have to realign things to get into that zone so that's how this is quite useful um, how does it work i mean it will tilt if it's off so it has a principle where like you know it's a three point uh, it, 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 it has uh, three sensors mm -hmm. uh, which will give you load if it is exactly at the center the cg is exactly at the center you get the same value in all the three sensors okay, okay. right so if you uh, if you have like slight offset mm. it will give you different values based on that you can back calculate what is the cg mm -hmm, offset mm -hmm. Will the launch clamp also have something like that? Uh, pardon? When you assemble on the launch pad, yeah. will it also be able to do this CG calculation? No, no, no. The For a full design. strike vehicle, you no, want no, just no. each so element? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because see, we want that launch ground to be super rigid. Right. Right. So, this is not rigid because it has sensors in between and then on very thin sections to measure it, etc. Right. So, we want it to be super rigid. So, yeah. So, generally on launch, we don't do that. And mm -hmm. that is that much is not required anyway because mm -hmm. section wise we anyway do mm -hmm. and wherever propellant is there propellant takes care of the CG. Mm -hmm. You put in like you know several tons of propellant mm -hmm. and you see that the tool you know the for example sword motor you have a mandal in between mm -hmm. it's very accurate then you get the CG right at the center. Right, right, right. Yeah. But I think this is one we have one of the sections here I think oh, this is. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I this thought is that's one a real two. person for some time. <laughs> yeah so this is uh, yeah so this is one of the uh, one to l i think this is uh, one of the hardwares which mm. is yet to get assembled yeah so this is like this is like a super light composite structure right. which you can just lift with your oh. hand you know <laughs> you just lift with your hand but it takes the mm. loads of a rocket you know yeah so you can just uh, i was able to lift two structures with <laughs> two of my hands right yeah and you can see like this is how the radius i mean like uh, the diameter of the vehicle will look so this is what you're calling the honeycomb honeycomb thing yeah 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 so it has it is a very light honeycomb section inside which makes it like uh, super light and still mm. has that section modulus which you require right right wow yeah so this is like one of the structure but like uh, so we have like seven eight of such structures in the vehicle mm -hmm. Yeah. This is such a big grain. Yeah. It moves along the whole 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 facility. Whole, fa whole facility. Yes, yes. Then So that stage when you had moved out it was through this and this is your main Yeah, this is the main bay. Oh, you'll have to have to design the whole thing around this as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it directly goes to the road. So basically, all these openings of the shutters mm -hmm. and you know the how the the length and what turning radius, all that has to be considered to design the facility. So this limits your stage potential length for future. You can can you make it bigger? Uh, pardon? Yeah. This one? Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, like uh, so, this facility I think is good enough for maybe like slightly bigger uh, motors than what we build, mm -hmm. but uh, not more than that. 
shipping this must be okay these are as of now these are small yeah but we have this shipping uh, uh, container so each one of these again it's a container mm -hmm. right so and then like we also have like uh, big trucks mm -hmm. 40 feet trucks mm -hmm. etc moving uh, the bigger ones the bigger hardware's and here i think you can see a flex seal maybe this is yeah yeah so this is our stage uh, yeah so this is our stage stage 2 flex seal you can see the metal here inside there are layers of rubber oh it literally looks like oh yeah on skill oh yeah this is not what i expected <laughs> yeah 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 i had seen this uh, mark 3 Big one, S200, the big flex. Yeah, 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 that's a very big flex. Dark flex, flex seal. Yeah, yeah. So this is another flex seal. Also, oh, it's it's like this big. Yeah, that big. That's it. Oh, but stage one will be bigger. Hmm. The stage one is big. Later, we went to this uh, other facility where, unfortunately, I was not recording video. So while I play this video, I will talk on the video and explain what I saw. So here there was another. stage 2 this is kalam 250 motor right and if you see behind you will see spare parts of vks with that is vikram s rockets lying here this is another inter stage and if you see just right of it there are some fairing testing parts so this is for fit and all of those checks test checks here you see the cryogenic test facility this is mobile this can be moved so you could have you would have seen this uh, in that dhavan to uh, dhavan engine test which is a cryogenic smithlox engine so this they showed uh, so this can be moved that facility here you see there are two fresh flex seals so what pawan is describing here is the top of the nozzle will get attached on top so that is fixed and the uh, sorry the top of the yeah the nozzle the outward part will get attached down and this whole thing the lower thing can flex on top of that ring so so this is how uh, that works and I, i want to some day create a video explaining how this flex nozzles work with animations wait yeah so there were two of this and you see more test stands here for small engines this is a inter stage they were using for testing the separation mechanism etc you see some jigs here to transport some heavy things and here you see some fuel tanks so this was it mainly uh, besides this uh, there was some st full stage i'll show you in a second so this this big tanks you show uh, you are seeing are uh, used for higher st storing of fuel so this one was a completed first stage again in this is a different facility uh, there were some fairings uh, and uh, you'll also see a stage 1 tool here you saw making the stage 1 which we saw earlier while wrapping in general this this whole tour was really exciting i learned a lot Pawan actually spent a great deal of time. Although this interview is like maybe like one hour or so, but uh, he spent almost four hours with me, more than four hours. So I'm grateful he gave so much time because if you know startup founders, they are extremely busy. So making time for something like this, I'm very grateful, and I hope you enjoyed this. I don't know how many will watch this entire thing. It's very long, and some parts get very technical. But again, uh, I it's very exciting that I've reached a day, you know, where. i can do factory tours of rocket companies in india when i made my whole spacex of india thing i know it sounds cringe spacex of india it's, it shouldn't this is skyroot of india but that time you know these all started also very early in the game and very very small progress done so seeing all these startups get matured whether it's pixel skyroot belatrix uh agnicol It's really exciting to see them mature and you know become big giants. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing and if you want to financially support this channel you can hit the join button. Thank you. And one thing I want to mention before going was this tour that I did Bangalore Hyderabad wouldn't be possible without the financial support of all my members. So I'm displaying all their names who are currently active.